Lead Code Problem 20, Valid Parenthesis. Hey everyone, this is Keystrokes. I'm a senior software engineer at one of the FANGs and I like to solve lead code problems and programming puzzles. And today we'll take a look at Lead Code's Problem 20, which is called Valid Parenthesis and it's an easy problem. So let's take a look at the problem statement. We are given a string and the string can contain several bracket characters. Now our goal is to check that the brackets in the string, they are all balanced. So let's see everything that you need to know to solve this problem. You will need to know some basic programming concepts like loops. And then as for data structures, you will need to know how to use stacks. And we will also discuss a solution using maps, but that's optional. So let's brainstorm to see how we can solve this problem. If you like the explanation, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so let's take a very simple example. Let's say our string was opening brackets and closing brackets. Then how can we check if it's balanced? So the first thing we'll do is start iterating on each characters. So we'll first pick this character and we can put this in a stack. So let's say if this was our stack, then we can put this character in the stack right here. When we move on to the next character, we see that it's a closing bracket. Now, if it's a closing bracket, we can try to pop whatever we have in the stack on the top, which will be this bracket here. So if we pop this out, we get this opening bracket and then we try to match the closing bracket with the opening bracket and if they correspond to each other. If they do, then it's well and good and we can keep moving forward. But in this case, this was our last character in the string. So we do not have any more brackets to close. So after we are done iteration here, our stack is basically empty as we popped this out and we found a matching bracket. So we don't have any more characters to process and our stack is empty. So that means the string that we started with, it's balanced. Next, let's try a slightly more complex example. Let's say we had opening bracket, then another opening bracket, then we had a closing bracket, and then another open bracket, and close bracket, and then a final close bracket. By looking at it, we can tell that it's balanced. So let's see if our previous algorithm still works on this. So again, we'll create a stack. We'll start with our first character, and because it's an opening bracket, we'll put this into a stack. So it lands in our stack. Then we move on to the next character. Now this is again an opening bracket. So we put this into a stack. And so we have it added to our stack. Now the next character is a closing bracket. So we pop the top of the stack, which will be this element. So this comes out and we get this from the stack. And now we match if these two brackets are opening and closing pairs and they are. So everything is good here. And this element was removed from the stack. Now we move on to the next character in our string which is an open bracket. So we move it into a stack, we push it to the top. Now we move on to the next character and now this time it's a closing bracket. So we pop the top of the stack. So we get this opening bracket and then we try to match this opening bracket with our current character and they do form a pair. So this is a valid pair. So this opening bracket was eliminated from the stack. Now we have our last character here, which is a closing bracket again. So we pop the top of the stack. In this case, it's this element right here. So we pop it out and we get this opening bracket, which matches with the closing bracket that we have. So this was a valid pair as well. Now we don't have any more characters to process here and our stack is empty because this last element was processed as well. So this whole string was balanced as well. Now let's talk about some of the corner cases. So let's say if we had this as the opening bracket and then we had a closing bracket and then we had yet another closing bracket. How will the process look like for this? So let me create a stack here and we start with the first element and we put it into a stack because it's an open bracket. So it goes here. Next, this element is a closing bracket. So we pop the top of the stack. We get this open bracket and this forms a good pair. So this stack element is eliminated and our stack is empty. Now we move on to the next character which is a closing bracket. So now we look at our stack, but we don't see any more elements in there. That is, this bracket cannot close any open bracket that we have. In that case, this is not a balanced case. So if we ever encounter a closing bracket and we see that our stack is empty, that is, there is no other bracket to close, then we can end our program and say that the string is not bracket balanced. Now, similarly, let's say we had an open bracket and then another open bracket and a closing bracket. Now, if we do our stack again, we start character by character. So this is our first character. It's an open bracket. So it goes into our stack and we put it here. Then we have another open bracket. We put it into our stack here. And then we have a closing bracket. So we pop the top of the stack. We get an open bracket and then this pair matches. And so this element is removed. Now we don't have any more characters to process, but we see that we still have this bracket which has not been closed. So as we are done processing each characters in the string, we need to check if our stack is empty. If it is not empty, that means the string is not balanced, which is the case over here. 
Next, let's look at one final corner case, which will be you have an open bracket and then you have a mismatching closing bracket. So if we draw a stack, we get an open bracket, we put it in here and it ends up in the stack. Then we move on to our next character. Now, because it's a closing bracket, we pop the top of the stack. So we get this open bracket. And now when we match these pair, we see that the brackets are different and that they do not actually close or open each other. So this is basically a mismatch. And in this case, this string is not balanced again. So now that we know all of our corner cases and we have some sense of the algorithm, let's see how the pseudocode looks like for this. Okay, so here's the pseudocode of everything that we just discussed. We will have S as the input string, and then we'll create a stack where we will store all the open brackets. Now for each of the characters in the string S, we will check if the character is an open bracket, that is either of these three. And if it is, then we will push it onto the stack. Otherwise, if it's a closing bracket, then we will check if the stack is empty. If it is, that means there is no corresponding opening bracket, and so the brackets are not balanced, and we simply return false. Otherwise, we pop the top of the stack and then we ensure that the open bracket that we popped from the stack matches the bracket from the string that we're operating on. If they do not match, that means again, they are not balanced and we return false. Otherwise, towards the end, when we're done processing all the characters, that is all the brackets, then we need to make sure that the stack is empty. If it's not empty, then it means the string is not balanced and all brackets were not closed. And so we can simply return if the stack is empty, which will be true if the stack is empty, meaning the brackets were balanced. Otherwise, it will be false, meaning the brackets were not balanced. Okay, so now that we know the pseudocode, we can code it out. But before we jump into the IDE, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you like my explanation so far. And also, if you like my style of explanation, and if you like to connect with me, you can get one-on-ones with me. If interested, please find the link to this in the description. Okay, so let's jump into our IDE and code this out. Okay, so here I have IntelliJ and I have a solution class here with the method which we see at lead code as well, which we can see right here. It's called isValid and it expects a boolean as a return type and we accept a string s, which we have right here, a boolean is valid and we take a string s. I also have a main class here where I just put in some test cases and call this class to run the function. So let's code out our solution. The first thing we need is to create a stack. So let's create a stack of characters and let's simply call it stack and we can do new stack and this creates our stack. Next, let's run a for loop and we can do loop equal to zero. Loop is smaller than the length of the string and then we increment our loop. Okay, next let's get the current character which is pointed by the loop. We can do final care and we can name it as current care and then we can do s dot caret and the index which will be loop in this case then the first thing we need to check is if this current character is an open bracket so we can do if current care is opening bracket or this opening bracket or this opening bracket Oop, i missed the r condition here okay then we simply push this into our stack so we can do stack dot push and then current character otherwise this is a closing character. So the first thing we should check is if our stack has a character that needs to be closed. So if our stack is empty, that means there is nothing to close and hence the brackets are not balanced. So we can simply return false. Otherwise, we'll pop the character from the top of the stack and we can store that in stack top and we can do stack dot pop to get the top of the stack. And then we match this bracket with the closing bracket. So we can even name this opening bracket just to be more accurate so if the current character is a closing curly bracket then the top of our stack that is the opening bracket should be an opening curly bracket as well now we'll need similar conditions for the other two types of brackets so let me break this down into multiple lines so breaking this into the next line and adding these as or conditions or if the current character is this closing bracket, then our expected opening bracket should be this. And similarly, if our closing bracket is this, then our opening bracket should be this. So if all of this matches, then we are good. So we can reverse this condition and do if it's not equal to, that is there's a bracket mismatch, then we simply return false. So here we are just trying to check if the brackets are not balanced. Otherwise, we come all the way towards the end of the method and we check if the stack has any more elements. If it does, 
that means the brackets are not balanced. Otherwise, if the stack is empty, that means there are no more brackets to close. And so the brackets were balanced. So we can simply return the value of stack empty. Okay, so let's run this program for the example use cases I have, and they all say correct answer. Let's copy this program and go into lead code and paste it right here. And let's run it for the base cases that we have. And yes, they were all accepted. So now let's submit the solution. And this was successful and it beats 99.19% of the solution. Well, that wasn't bad. Let's see if you can use maps and improve the solution a little. So now let's see if you can use a map to make this solution a little more simpler. So the first thing we'll do is define a map on the top. So let's do private static final and create a map from a character to a character. And let's call it a bracket map. And we can initialize this by doing map off. And in here, we just want to store the pairs of brackets that we want. So for this bracket, we want this as the opening bracket for this bracket, we would want this as the opening bracket. And similarly, for the last bracket type, that is a square bracket, we want this as the opening square bracket. Okay, so we'll keep our stack as it is, we get our current character. But now here we can update this condition to be if the bracket map contains the value of the current character, because previously we were just checking for all of the open brackets here. And now those open brackets are part of the value of the map. So all we have to do is this. Similarly, in here, this if condition can be replaced as well. So here, let's see what we can do. We can use the bracket map and do a get on the current character because the current character is a closing bracket. We should get the corresponding opening bracket. And if this does not match the opening bracket, then we simply return false which is equivalent to what we had previously in the if condition. So we can remove this and that's all we need here. The best part about using maps is that you have to add new pairs just to this map and the rest will be taken care of. So let's run this program to make sure the base cases still pass. And yes, they still pass. So let's copy all of this again and go to lead code and replace what we had previously. So replacing this whole thing and running it for the base case again and it was success. Now let's submit this and this still works. It seems slightly slower, but it's way more readable now. Well, that's all I had for this video. I hope you liked the explanation and now you can solve the problem using stacks. And that is one of the most classic use of stacks to solve this problem. If this video is helpful, please don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to my channel and to follow me on Twitter. And you can also buy me some coffee. Well, that's all I had for today. I'm working on the next video and that should be coming out soon. In the meantime, Try out this question on LeetCode. Have a great time solving all these problems and I'll see you next time.